Yeah, much of what I want to do with you today is to put you into the shoes of a struggling reader. So you feel how they feel about reading and you see this ridiculous language of ours as they see it. Now this is part of page 161 in Toe by Toe, which is just about at the end of the reinforcement process for these particular problem words. So let's look at these words and see what your student sees. By page 161, they will know the mu t rule. It should say what? Not, it says r, but what should it say phonetically? Well, no, the e at the end is changing the sound of the preceding vowel, isn't it? So it's air, air. Think about bear, hair, care, and so on. So that should say, uh, according to what toe by toe has taught this poor child, it should say air. Next one down should say what? Gone, because of the e at the end. And the next one down should say what? Must. Good. Now, that vowel digraph, toe by toe, specifically teaches one sound. Ow! Ow! And that is all it teaches. Of course, very often, it doesn't make that sound in English, but there's nothing we can do about that. I keep coming back to this point, that toe by toe cannot teach everything. Toe by toe is a simplification. But that's why it's so effective. So according to toe by toe, it should say wowed. Good. On the next one, buff. On the next one, open. On the next one, because. Old. We are we here. You know, maybe they know the H is silent next to a W, maybe they don't. But notice, very similar to this. Where and were. Every single student I've worked with, every single struggling reader I've worked with, confuses where and were. If a child consistently confuses where and were, was and saw, how and who, B and D of course, sometimes B and P, if there's any poor spellers in the family, dyslexic. Again, it's a rule of thumb, but it's a very good rule of thumb. 99% of the time, that child will indeed be dyslexic. So if you want an instant free dyslexia diagnosis, just look out for that. Okay, so Y has got three sounds. So what are they? Y yeah. yeah is one. E or I. Good. Now, personally, I would say I rather than E, but that's just an accent thing, you know. Some people say happy, some people say happy. It doesn't really matter. So that could say the ye or the e or the I. The one thing it couldn't possibly say is they. So you can see these wretched, struggling readers, these, these dyslexic children, we give them phonics, 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 and then we give them this. Is it any wonder they get frustrated and angry with this crazy language of ours? If you are dyslexic, it's easier to memorise or to guess than to knuckle down to the process of decoding, which is, which is what we require in toe by toe. So these two coping strategies are a huge problem for us. And that's why Keda's first major breakthrough was when she began to use nonsense words. And the function of nonsense words, the reason that they're in there, is to preempt the possibility of memorization and guessing. That's why there's so much nonsense in toe by toe. And the second major breakthrough is the syllable division, the way that toe by toe breaks up words. She developed her own syllable division her own method to break up words. And this is the essence of toe by toe. Yeah. Because the syllable division, the use of nonsense words, is the reason why toe by toe is such a powerful tool. Why is the syllable division important? If you're a normal reader, you don't need a syllable division. It's irrelevant. But just imagine, if you can, how it feels if you're a struggling reader and you're faced 
with a long squiggle, a sequence of these weird squiggles. You look at this thing and you haven't a clue where to even begin. You look at this thing, you panic, you throw the book at the teacher, you haven't a clue where to even begin. But if we can give them a very simple approach, a word attack skill, so that when they see a word, they think, all right, there's a bit there, a bit there, maybe a bit there as well. Then they can, they can get down to this process of decoding. Whether you've used toe by toe or not, I dare say you look at these pages of nonsense and maybe you're not even sure that you can read these words yourself correctly. Right, never mind judge whether your student has read them correctly or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you the syllable division. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we check that your student can recognise a vowel that they know what a vowel looks like. So all they have to do is to say yes if it's a vowel, no if it's not. So, no, 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 yes, no, yes, no, yes, and so on, dead easy. Even severely dyslexic children seldom have a problem with that, but we have to be sure. And then, the first step is, the basic syllable division is that the student starts at the left-hand side of the word and when they come to the first vowel, they jump over the next letter and they draw a line. You don't need to use this fancy word consonant. You just say vowel, letter, line. And that's all they have to do. Except if it's followed by the same consonant twice, a repeated consonant. Two P's, two T's and so on. In, in such a case... You draw the line after the second consonant. So you can see here how it works. No yes consonant line. No yes twin line. Vowel consonant line. Vowel consonant line. Vowel consonant line and so on. Fight against the tendency to recognise real words or bits of real words amongst all this nonsense. This is pure nonsense. And also, never draw a line that would leave a single letter hanging in space at the end. So where does the first line go, please, in number one? After the F, F and then after the D. second D, then after the N, N after the R. R, after the second T, after the M, the N, the second T. The important vowel sounds are the short vowel sounds. Use the short vowel sound unless there's a reason for the long sound. So number one says, off, ad, in, se, it, im, an, ket, er. Well done. Now, ch, th, ch, and k, or as Ruth Miskin would say, these make single discrete sounds. We cannot speak split them up, can we? Because it's a single sound. So we have to draw the line after the H, or in this case, after the K, the kicking K. Okay, so where's the first vowel? Oh, so where do you draw the line? After the K, well done. And the next one, after the, after the, sh, after the, the second L, the same rules apply from one and two. After the N, the H, the twin, the H, the N, the H. Okay, so number three, everybody, read it to me, please. What does it say? Ish, ah, an, dak, en, thrad, oop, or youp. It doesn't matter whether you say oop or youp, but it has to be the long vowel sound, oo or you, right? Ish, ah, an, dak, en, thrad, oop. And number four, everybody, what does it say? Op, ak, of, o, cham, Pen, ding. Well done. Yeah, what does that say, please? Good. And this one? Good. So again, these are single sounds, aren't they? You cannot break up these sounds, so we have to draw the line after the H in both cases. So you see here, vowel, consonant, line, vowel, ch, line, vowel, ch, line, and so on. 
Okay, the first line goes where? After the after the K, and then after the R, then after the H, after the H again, after the double D, after the R, after the T. What's it say, number five, everybody? Of it at. I put it there to trap you. And some of you fell into the trap and you said one. Now, why did you say one? Because you recognize the real word. So that's why I say fight against a tendency to recognize words or bits of words. This is pure nonsense. So we just apply the decoding skill own. Och, er, etch, of, id, er, et, own. Number six, everybody, what does it say? Itch, ash, o, f, m, af, odd. In. Brilliant. Okay, now, uh, the posture for these things is vowel digraphs. So we've got two vowels work together to make a single vowel sound. We take the long sound of the first, O, ignore the second. Long sound of the first, ignore the second. Long sound of the first, ignore the second. In primary schools we say, when two vowels go walking, you don't say it in Derby? When two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. No? Well, it's a good way to get the point across, but of course it doesn't always work. So, so I'm not sure it's a good idea, really. But anyway, the important thing is it's a single vowel sound, isn't it? O-A-E. It's a long sound, but it's a single vowel. It's not o a, it's just O. So from our perspective now, drawing these lines... That's just a vowel, a vowel, and a vowel. So the same rules apply from one to six, and you can see here. Here's your first vowel, vowel consonant line, vowel sh line, vowel consonant line, and so on. And number seven, where does the first line go? After the M, and then after the S. Now, some of you are drawing it after the T. Don't worry, be happy. It doesn't matter. But it should go after the S because that's an initial blend. But in practice, when my students make that slight mistake, I just ignore it. It's really not worth worrying about. Because T mestos or T mestos sound the same anyway. So don't worry about it. But after the M, after the S, after the, after the SH, then after the P, after the N, the double D. Everybody, number seven, what does it say? T S Tosh up. Ain did er. Uh. Well done. And the last one, everybody. Hog er uh, team ale sir van. I. I. The E at the end, right? I. Good. So back to page 155, everyone. Okay, now, first column. What does it say, please, everybody? Mape at. Oi, mate at oi. Next one down says bait ish. Next one, raid paint. Next one, ain peck er. Next one, pain a talk. Next one, en sake rip. And finally, aid up ot. Well done. Notice it is not necessary to say mate at oi. Yeah, we're not testing for fluency. All we're testing is that your student knows where the lines go and the sound that each bit makes. So mape at oi is fine. That's what we're looking for. Prame in itch, paid in ke, and so on. Okay, now, toe by toe specifically teaches that that vowel diagraph has got two sounds, e and e. The short and the long sound of the vowel E. That is what toe by toe specifically teaches. So in this case, we've got one grapheme and two possible phonemes, haven't we? E or E. So because there's more than one possible sound, you say to the student at this point, you say, now here, there's more than one sound, so we cannot practice in nonsense words. We have to practice in real words. So if it doesn't sound right with one, try the other one. So for example, is it unpleasant or unpleasant? 
hopefully they'll know. And it doesn't take them long to, uh, to adjust to that, I have to say. However, this is English that we're dealing with. So, again, toe by toe does not teach everything. It cannot teach everything. Toe by toe teaches the two main sounds of that vowel diagram. But what sound is that? A. What sound is that? It, well, it's E-A, isn't it? E-A. Yeah. What sound is that? E-A. E-A. So, so A, E-A, E-A. What sound is that? E. e. But here it's E-A, isn't it? I've been drinking this stuff for 35 years, as you can see. How many times have you seen that word? Thousands exactly, millions of times. You've seen it on the sides of buses, TV ads, magazine ads, every pub you've ever been in. You've seen that word a million times. It wasn't until I used toe by toe I thought there's something strange about Guinness. So what is strange about Guinness? Or the written representation thereof? The you. The you, exactly. What on earth is the you doing there? Well, toe by toe teaches there are two sounds for the letter G. There's the soft sound J. The hard guttural G. If it's followed by E, I or Y, you say the soft sound. A, O, U or any consonant, you say the hard sound. This is what toe by toe teaches. Now, imagine if you're a struggling reader. This is difficult. Because suddenly, you have to start looking at the next letter to tell you what sound the previous letter uh, makes. So this is, a, this is a radical departure from previous, previous stuff in toe by toe. This is difficult. So toe by toe teaches this, and then if I go back to Guinness, which I always do, why is there a U in Guinness? What's it doing? What's its job? What's its function? The function of the U is to make it hard. Otherwise, it would say Guinness, wouldn't it? Okay, so what's happening with the Irish surgeon? The function of the E is to make it soft. It's working in the opposite direction, isn't it? So what I'm saying is, if you're a non-dyslexic reader, that says surgeon, that says Guinness, so what? But if you are a struggling reader, things like this really do your head in. It's difficult. The first time your students do this, they'll get tick, dot, 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 tick, dot, dot, dot. This is difficult. But notice, it's page 185. That means you're two-thirds of the way through the book. That means two-thirds of the pages are at the back of the rubber band, never to be looked at again. By this point, your student knows this is something I can do. However, this is English, and there are many exceptions to that rule, and there's not a damn thing we can do about it. I'm sorry. And these are just a few of the exceptions. Get, give, girl, gelding, and so on. Sorry, there's nothing we can do about the exceptions. Toe by toe cannot teach everything. Okay, everyone. First word, what's it say? And the next one? And the next one? And the next one? So what's all that about? That's the hard and soft C, isn't it? Good, the hard and soft C. If it's followed by E, I, or Y, you use the soft sound. Anything else, A, O, U, or any consonant, use the hard sound. Okay, so that's what Tobador teaches. Then we give them page 191. Now, this is also difficult, but it's easier than the previous one because they've got used to the technique of looking at the next letter to tell them what sound to say. And also, I think... There are fewer exceptions with a soft and hard C than the soft and hard G. So, everyone, let's read the last column. What's it say? Sir, Eb, Ode. Next one down. Back, Om, Itch. Next one down. Man, Sid, Eam. Next one down. Fran, Sid, Ock. Next one down. N, Sir, Ipe. Next one, ban, seem, all. And finally, sun, sid, 
ein. Well done. Now, here you said back om itch. So well done. There you applied the rule that I went to such lengths to teach you 10 minutes ago that when there's a twin consonant, you draw the line after the second one. So well done. Sorry. There's an exception to that as well. And that is the double C. So this is the usual situation. Look, vowel twin line, vowel consonant line, connecting. But a double C, if it's followed by E or I, you actually draw the line in the middle. And you say both sounds. You say K and you say S. So you say K. So we can see here. In this one here, double C, followed by an I, draw it in the middle. What do you say, please, everybody? Ik, sip, ode. But here you say suck and ping. Here it's followed by an E. What do you say? Tack, sell, ot. Here it's followed by an O. Nick, om, rit. Followed by an I. Ak, sim, oat. Followed by an I. Ok. Sim et. Followed by an O, sac alter. Followed by an O, mac on er. Uh. Well done. And in reality, every child's favourite vegetable, brock all e, but this says ac sid entel. This says ac os ted. This says Accessory. This says Occident and this says Desic 8. That is how toe by toe works. Step by step, slowly but surely, build up the student's confidence, show them this is something they can do, and it should work virtually every time. The length of time it takes to get through it varies enormously, depending upon the severity of the student's dyslexia. But it will work every time, as long as you can get that student on board. They have to help you to help them. You are not going to succeed without their active cooperation.